at support and resistance, one of the cornerstones of technical analysis and a key element of price action trading. This lecture will look at components of support and resistance and then move onto the charts to clarify and explain each point further. You should already have a basic understanding of support and resistance from the free introduction to trading course. In this lecture, we will look at what is support and resistance. We will go over how to identify it, highlight some useful tips to help you along the way, and we will look at support and resistance on different timeframes. We will then have a live demonstration where we will pick a market and timeframe and then identify support and resistance levels using the tools we have gathered from this lecture. What is support and resistance? Support and resistance simply refers to price levels on a market we think have a high probability of showing reactions when price reaches those levels. We use historic price reactions as a way to identify support and resistance levels for future use. Support levels are areas we expect there to be a lot of buyers, and resistance levels areas where we expect there to be a lot of sellers. You tend to find that important levels in the past, areas where markets change direction or stalled for long periods, are often reaction areas when the market revisits them. As a price action trader, we can identify these areas as price levels to watch for potential trading opportunities. How do we identify support and resistance? We are interested in areas that have shown to be significant historically. We are looking at areas that have been used as both support and resistance. With the support and resistance video, we are going to refer to the charts after we complete each section. What we're going to do is we're going to use the NAS100, which is the US NASDAQ index. And we're also going to use GBP USD, the Forex pair. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to just look at ways to identify support and resistance. We're looking for reaction areas and stall areas. So for the NASDAQ, we are on the daily time frame, and it's very, very simple. You're just looking for areas where the market has made strong movements after it reached the level. So you could have one here, and then we see a significant amount of buying pressure coming into the market. You could have one down here. Again, strong buying pressure comes into the market. You've got one down here. Strong buying pressure comes into the market. Now, what we're also doing is we're looking for areas where the market has stalled, like this. So the market has came up to this level and it has just moved sideways for one, two, three, four, five days. This is a Sunday. Um, so this is um, showing the weekend of trading. So we just ignore these candles. One, two, three, four, five trading days of just basically moving sideways. So this is potentially an area of support and resistance. If we come to the left, again, we're seeing the market pressing up into resistance and then falling away. We're finding support and then we're pressing higher. Now, as you start to move up, you've also got little levels like this. Really, these are a lot more minor. If this is the only thing that you're seeing, you want to be a little bit careful of plotting support and resistance levels around them. Because what you can end up doing is, let's say we're working on this level of price action. You could have a level here. You could then say, okay, the market is stalled here, so I want one here. You could have one here. And then you could have one here. You could have one up here. Then you could start to have one down here. And what starts to happen is the market get or your chart gets way too cluttered. Um, you're focusing on levels that are not showing significant price reactions. Um, what you are trying to do is pick out the key levels. And the key levels, you know, they, they tend to just scream out at you from the chart. Very, very obvious levels where significant buying pressure has came into the market, significant selling pressure, or the market has held for a significant amount of time. So a number of days, uh, and we're seeing strong price movements on each of these days, but the market has been unable to break through. And then we get a very strong move up, we come back down, we find key support, and we press higher once again. So GBP USD, we are on the weekly time frame. 
And what you can see is already it's clearing up a little bit. And it's because now we're looking at candles that are displaying an entire week of price action. So it's encompassing, um, where was that stalled section of price action? Here. It's encompassing all of these candles um, into one single candle. So what it can do is it can clear it up a little bit for you and just make the levels a little bit more obvious. So when you're first starting to practice, you can start on the weekly time frame. And we can see resistance, resistance, support, market press is higher. Up here, we've got resistance once, twice. We also found support down here. And we had a strong bounce. And really, that's, that's the main things you're looking for. It's relatively simple. You're just picking out the strong reaction points on each of the markets that you are looking at. Let's look at a few tips to help you pick out the best support and resistance levels. Support and resistance is very rarely an exact level. Instead, think of them as support and resistance zones. Support and resistance is somewhat subjective. You will never have the exact same areas marked as another trader. The most important thing is that you are confident in your zones. You will build confidence through backtesting, forward testing, and also live trading. Areas near round numbers often act as support and resistance areas. Drawing market movements can help you identify strong support and resistance levels and train the eye to spot them. A lot of people focus on the very highest levels of price movements or the lowest levels, but they are not always the key support and resistance area. Okay, so now we are back onto the charts and we're going to focus on the NASDAQ for this portion of the video. What we're gonna do is we are first of all going to look at support and resistance in terms of zones rather than exact levels. I'm also going to tie that into looking at why support and resistance is not only at the very highest point or the very lowest point of a price movement, which is a mistake that I see a lot of traders making. We'll then go over why support and resistance is somewhat subjective, and then we'll look at round numbers and drawing movements in order to help you, as a beginner, learn um, to plot support and resistance levels. So, we are on the NASDAQ. The first thing to look at are the very highest points of market movements and the very lowest points of market movements. When you're marking up support and resistance, it's a very common mistake that I see that people just mark in the very highest area or the very lowest area. And what we can see is we have the very highest area up here, we get resistance and we move down. As we're coming back up, the market reacts before that level with the strong sell. Support level down here, we reach all the way down, very strong movement, but on the second wave down here, we don't reach that low again before we get the strong bounce. And then you can also actually say, if you come across here, if you marked in the very lowest point, it bounces, it comes down, we've got another relatively strong bounce, but it hasn't reached this level. And that's because support and resistance um, is looked at as a zone rather than an exact level. You've got to remember, down here, um, this is where we get the very strong bounce, sure, but a support level is just a level where the buyers are starting to step into the market and then they start to overpower the sellers and the market moves up. So as we're coming down here, every buyer is not buying at this exact level and they're not buying at this exact level with all of their money. Some are buying here. Some are buying here. Some are buying here. Okay. And we are looking at, we're looking to identify the levels where this buyer started to step in in a strong way and then where they started to take control of the market. So to do that, we look at it in terms of a zone. It's the exact same with resistance levels. Um, this is the exact point where we start to see the sell-off, but the sellers are stepping in here, here on this candle, here on this candle. Um, as we start to press down, they're stepping in here, here, and here. It's an entire level of resistance. Okay, so when we're marking in the zones, we're looking at, so we have the very low down here. For me with this one, really it starts here. 
So the market's coming down. We're incorporating this very strong spike. We then get the close of this candle, the open of this candle. It spikes down into this little level here, and then we start to find the support. We've got the spike down here, and you can even include this spike all the way down here. For me though, really, it's this whole level. This is where the majority of the buying um, pressure is starting to come in, because we've got the one test, two tests with the close and the spike down, three tests with the open of the candle before we start to press away. And then what you can see is if you come to the right, market comes down, bounces just up above, spikes down, and then we find the support. Um, if we were marking up this, okay, so perfect. If we were marking up this level, what you can also see is we're looking for more evidence. And you can see the market testing, testing, and testing. Now we've got quite a few spikes down here that you'd very likely want to incorporate. So you would be marking this up as your potential support and resistance zone, and then as the market comes back to this level, we're testing at the level, and then we find the support. Move forward, we're testing again, and we're finding support. For this one, we're not just looking at the very highest point. We're basically looking and saying, okay, this is a potential resistance area. Where were the sellers really starting to step in? Where can we incorporate everything that was happening? And for me, it's really here. You're incorporating the three spikes up, which is showing that the sellers are stepping in. The market hesitates up here and then starts to sell off. It tries to press up again, but what's happening? The sellers are stepping in. It's this whole area. And what you can also see is resistance. We break up above, we come back down, we start to find support. One, two, market holds, and then we break down. So we're marking in this flat section of price action and the lows of this flat section of price action, if we take the, the spike down, the close, the open, it's lining up with the spike up, it's lining up with this spike down over here. We then put in the lower band and we'd say, okay, we can just take into account this spike down, which creates the support, or we can start to look around the market and see what it's telling us. Yeah, on the way down, the market's coming up, it's finding resistance, and then we're getting a strong move down. We're coming up, we're breaking down, we're testing at this level once again. It's resistance becoming support. And then as you move forward, what do you see? The price reaction. Okay, so in terms of zones, um, that's pretty much how you're doing it. You're looking for where the majority of the reactions are happening. And then, you know, as you're starting to move forward, you're not just blindly using this zone forever. Um, as you start to move forward, you're looking at the more recent price action and you're starting to say, okay, do my zones still make sense? Do I need to take into account more recent price action? Now, in terms of being subjective, the markets are very subjective. So let's mark in this flat section here. Marking this up as a support and resistance level, this is how I would do it. I would be taking into account all of the flat section here. I'd be taking into account the vast majority of the spikes up. But this one here, this spike up, really for me, it's not overly significant. The majority of the price action and the support and resistance is happening within this area. And then what you can see as we move forward, it's resistance. It's then being used as support. It's then being used as resistance. It's then being used as resistance. However, if I sat down with another trader um, and we had our screens back to back, it's very unlikely that all of these levels would be exactly the same because they might look at it and say, okay, I want to incorporate that spike. And there's nothing wrong with that. The main thing with support and resistance is that you are confident in your support and resistance levels. So for this one down here, when we had it marked like this, they may not even have put this in, just had it as one large zone. Uh, this whole section back here, when they're marking it up. So you've got resistance multiple times. We then break up, we test our support. They may have it marked up like, let's say, like this. Just taking into account where the market was holding at this level and then where we spiked up into twice. Whereas if I was marking it up, I'd very likely have it like this because I want to incorporate the flat section of price action right here. Neither are wrong um, because it's somewhat subjective. The main thing is you 
you build confidence in your own levels and you do that really through testing uh, back testing forward testing and you know just jumping on the charts and and plotting your levels when you're plotting your levels uh, you can then look and see how the reactions are coming on the market when you're doing forward testing again you can test how the market is reacting forward testing we go over that quite a lot in the decisive package course uh, which you are looking to move on to I explain how to do it it's a very very good way to to practice support and resistance levels and get good at identifying them and building that confidence in your own levels okay so now we're going to move on to round numbers and drawing the market movement so let's just clear all of this off of the chart quickly and then what we'll look at are round numbers first so round numbers very very simple if you look to the right we've got the price levels 7010 if we just move it down to or get it on 7000 round about here if we then mark up let's say uh, 6800 or let's say we mark up 6500 okay round about here these can be good guides as to areas of potential support and resistance so what we can see is 7000 reaction reaction market holding if we come down to 6800 market holding reaction 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 and reaction if we start to come down to 6500 the reaction and then what you can say is the market is it breaks lower but it's really you can see all the spikes down testing at this level spike up spike down uh, the market spikes up and closes underneath the level they are they can be good guides to help you focus in on areas of the market now they're not exact again uh, and some of them are not going to be anywhere near a support and resistance level but they are psychological levels in the market that people tend to gravitate towards for buying and selling so they do very often um, across markets show reactions and by sort of looking at the 7000 level you can then say okay do we have any key levels around here that i can focus on and then you start to mark up your area right here um, if you come down to your 6800 level you can see the flat section of price action you can see the reaction it's just giving you um, a way to sort of zoom into the market on certain levels rather than having to pinpoint exact swings it's only when you're starting but it is a helpful tool to start you focusing on levels of the market to look for the reactions now the other way to do it and this is really the one that i prefer and it's how i learned support and resistance initially is that i used to draw the levels as the market was moving um, now you can use the line chart for this but personally i prefer drawing it because drawing it is interactive it's making you look at what you're doing focus on what you're doing um, and it helps sort of train the eye into the swing so i would just simply mark the movements in so we'd come up here and then we break down and then we break up and then we break down break up and this one very insignificant i'm just looking for relatively strong movements or prices where the market is held all the way down market moves up market moves down and here we've got a few chops let's just quickly draw them in just conscious of the length of this video i don't want to make it too long because it's very easy to start to tune out when you're watching uh, videos like this so all i'm doing is i'm drawing in each of the swings and then what i'm doing is i'm looking at the points of the triangles that have been created and again it's a way to focus me in on areas to look for potential support and resistance levels i'm only marking in the key ones the ones, the ones that are showing significant reactions or the market is holding multiple times and then what i'm doing is i am marking up my support and resistance levels around those areas so we've got the movement here i can see if i come to the left i'd have an arrow a uh, triangle here and i'd know to mark it up something like this we come down we get one we two we get a reaction a reaction what can we see we're going to be able to line those up into some sort of 
support level. And then what we can see as we move forward, we can see the market testing it once and twice. So support, support, resistance, resistance. Then we come down and we've got three here. It's telling me, okay, potentially this is going to be one or two support levels. So potentially I want to take into account these two triangles and then have this one separate. Yeah, and I'd have a triangle down here, like this. And I'd have one down here, like this, as we start to come up into this swing. And what it's telling me is, okay, so I really want to take into account this triangle right here. So I'll just move it down. And I'd want to have this one separate. So we've got the reaction coming in, support. As we move forward, the market's coming down, it's testing in there again as support. Very, very easy way to do it. And what it's forcing you to do is follow the market movements and learn how the market moves and then mark in those swings. Okay, guys, that's everything for this part of the video. Now let's look at timeframes in terms of support and resistance. Support and resistance can be identified on all timeframes. However, it is easier to spot key levels on higher timeframes. A significant reaction on the daily timeframe is a lot more powerful a market movement than a significant reaction on the one minute time frame. Using higher time frames can also help smooth out market noise. Similar to the previous point, if you are identifying every movement you see on a lower time frame, like say the one hour, you are likely picking out levels that are not key. By letting higher time frames guide you, it can help make sure you are focusing on important high probability levels. You can also dial down timeframes to help place support and resistance. This could be starting on the daily timeframe and then adjusting the levels on the four hour timeframe, for example. Okay, so for the final part of this video, we are quickly going to look at support and resistance on different timeframes. I'll then take you through how by using the higher time frames you can smooth out a lot of the price action so that you're only picking the very key levels and then we'll look at dialing down time frames so that you can make your support and resistance a little bit more accurate. So we're on GBP USD. We've already looked at this on the weekly time frame. NASDAQ we've looked at on the daily. So we'll just go to a different time frame. Let's say five minute. Let's scroll back a little bit. And then, you know, we can really do it anywhere. Let's say here. So we have resistance, resistance, market breaks up, comes back down, tests the support, and then starts to press away. Support, 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 support. Yeah, it happens on all time frames. We can even go on to the uh, one minute time frame, let's say. So what you can see is the, the candles, they start to look a little bit more choppy, but it's still reacting from support and resistance levels. Support, 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 tries to break down. What's it doing? Maintaining contact with that support level and then breaks down. What do we then do? We come back up, we start to test at this level. Here, we break up a little bit and we're finding resistance. As you start to move forward, whole section of resistance. Because these levels, all they are, are areas where buyers and sellers are getting into the market. You can see them on all time frames. Now, having said that, when you're marking up support and resistance, it's a lot easier to make sure you're only picking out the key levels if you focus on higher time frames. So, Let's look at this whole section here. Now, in terms of support and resistance, we've got a nice resistance level here. We've then got the market finding support here. I'm just going to mark up a few of these. We've got support right here, and we've got resistance up here. So they're relatively clear levels to pick out. Now, if we start to dial down, let's say onto the one hour time frame, and let's find that same level of price action. If we just zoom out. Okay, so back over here. What we can see is 
We've marked out the key levels on the daily time frame. However, on the one hour time frame, we're starting to find more zones. Come across. Um, got this whole level here. So this one's actually not too bad. And it's because it's a relatively small uh, movement point. This one right here. So we've got this and this marked on the daily time frame. But if we start to come down time frames, we start to see a lot more noise. So this level, 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 here, 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 and here. And what can happen is that you can start to get, or you can start marking up levels that are not overly key, and you can start trading from relatively poor support and resistance levels. So on the one hour time frame, this movement here is what, 20, 24 points. Um, pretty much, or 24 pips, sorry, a very, very small movement on this market. Even the bounce here, before we find resistance again, is 30 points. Now, if we go back onto the daily time frame, so we're marking this level here, it's over 100 pips. And then the bounce back up to the next level is 170 or even back up to previous resistance, again, 100 pips. And what it's doing is it's it's stopping you from, so you can see the rectangles, it's stopping you from picking out all of these little levels on the market. And it's allowing you to only look at the key levels and also to look for potential stronger movements. It's so very, very useful to use higher time frames. Now, what you can do is you can then dial down time frames. So we have, what I'm going to do is delete all of this quickly. And we're going to mark it with rectangles. So we had potential support here and here. We then have potential resistance right here. Now what we can do is we can then drop down onto, let's say the four hour time frame, And let's find those rectangles right here. Now what you can do is look at the price action on these levels and you can start to mark up your zones. So we can see the market holding, pressing up, finding resistance again. So we want to incorporate this entire section. And then you can say, okay, we've had one strong spike up here, but really the main levels are here, here, and here. And now you've created a more accurate zone. And you can see the market comes down, test at the level, test at the level, test at the level, and then bounces. Down here, instead of having the entire rectangle, you can start to make it more accurate. So we want to take into account the little holding price action here. And then we really want to start taking into account this section here. But really what I'm looking at is this whole flat section right here. I really want to incorporate that into the zone. And then we have one right here. Down below we can see this level is a rectangle, but what I'm looking at down there is potentially we've actually got two. Remember, support and resistance is not always at the highest points and the lowest points. For me, this is where the most reactions are happening. Resistance, support, support. And then we could take that level down below as a separate zone. So now rather than having one huge area where you can maybe get tricked into false trades, um, trades that you know it's showing a little bit of support but it's still going to come down to test this level you've got exact areas so here here uh, this section up here this small section up here um, it helps you pinpoint more accurate levels on your support and resistance what i tend to do is if i'm plotting on the daily i'll drop down to the h4 uh, four hour if i'm on the weekly i will then go down to the daily and then the four hour also I don't tend to go much lower than the four hour. Uh, that gives me enough of a view of the market and I, it makes sure that I'm looking at very key levels. Okay guys, so that is everything for this part of the video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a live demonstration. Uh, we will pick a chart and we will go onto it and we will pick out the support and resistance levels and talk you through what it is that we're doing in terms of what you have just learned.